Now that we've learned a little about the structures of alkenes and alkynes, and a little about their physical properties as well, we want to move into the next phase of learning about a new functional group or a new class of organic compounds. And that's where we begin to talk about the general types of reactions that they have, and more generally, what is the reactivity of a particular class of organic compounds. When we talk about organic reactions, there's one important concept to remember that underlies all the different types of reactions we'll learn about. That concept is the following. Electron-rich atoms or molecules will attract electron-poor atoms or molecules. We can even use some new vocabulary to shorten this phrase. When we talk about electron-rich atoms or molecules, we can replace that with the name of a nucleophile. A nucleophile is simply any species that has an electron pair that it can share. When we talk about electron-poor atoms or molecules, we can replace that with the term electrophiles. Electrophiles are literally the species that is looking for or wants to find electron pairs. In terms of examples of nucleophiles, we could think of things that have, for example, the hydroxide ion with a lot of lone pairs and an, a negative charge, or a chloride ion with four lone pairs of electrons and a negative charge. Nucleophiles do not need to have a negative charge. For example, amines, which have a nitrogen with a lone pair of electron, could also be nucleophiles. Water with two lone pairs on the oxygen could also serve as a nucleophile. In the case of alkenes, the pi bond in the double bond is also an example of an electron pair that can be shared, so alkenes will be good examples of a nucleophile. Electrophiles, on the other hand, will generally be looking for negative charge. Therefore, very often, electrophiles will have a positive charge themselves. Before we get too much further into a discussion of the reactions of alkenes, let's talk about the reactivity in general of alkenes. We've already seen that alkenes can be reactive due to their pi bond, which is an electron pair, to be shared. When we look at different kinds of alkenes, we see that the more stable they are, or the less reactive they are, will depend on the groups that are attached to the sp2 hybrid carbon atoms. Generally, the more stable alkenes will be those that have more carbon groups bonded to the sp2 hybrid carbons. So an alkene that has four carbon groups on the two sp2 hybrid carbons will be much more stable and less reactive than an alkene that has only one carbon group on the sp2 carbons of the double bond. That kind of alkene with only one carbon group on one sp2 carbon will be least stable and therefore most reactive. Another general trend we observe with alkenes is that trans isomers are more stable than cis isomers due to reduced steric strain. Therefore, trans isomers will be less reactive than cis isomers. Let's look at a few alkene reactions and see if we can draw any conclusions about how these alkene reactions take place. To begin with, let's look at the reaction of ethylene, C2H4, reacting with hydrogen bromide. In this reaction, we see that the hydrogen from hydrogen bromide is added to one of the carbons and the bromide ion is also added except to the other carbon that was part of the double bond. Let's look at another molecule that has a double bond and see how that molecule reacts with hydrogen bromide as well. This molecule is a steroid known as cholesterol. When we react it with hydrogen bromide, we notice that the carbon double bond that was in place has now reacted and a bromine has been added to one of the carbons, and a hydrogen has added to the other. In general, what we see in these reactions is that it doesn't matter what else is present in the reaction, 
but the hydrogen bromide atoms are added across the carbon-carbon double bond, replacing the pi bond. Now that we've seen there's a pattern to how alkenes react, let's see if we can understand a little bit more about why new molecules form. Chemists call the process of understanding how reactions take place, understanding a reaction mechanism. In general, the alkene reaction mechanism involves an alkene acting as a nucleophile and reacting with an electrophile. Let's look at this alkene mechanism in a little more detail. To begin with, we'll have a typical alkene and we'll do the reaction again with hydrogen bromide. In the first step, we see that the hydrogen bromide is actually a polar molecule, as we learned in previous videos. The hydrogen has a partial positive charge, and the bromine has a partial negative charge. This means that the hydrogen is acting like an electrophile because it's partially positive charge, it wants to have more electrons. In the first step of this mechanism, the hydrogen bromide will split apart and the hydrogen ion will form a bond to one of the sp2 hybrid carbons. It forms that bond by accepting the pi bond electron pair to form a, pair, a bonding pair between the carbon and the hydrogen. This leaves a bromide ion left over. In the second step of this mechanism, the bromide ion will act as a nucleophile and it'll form a bond with one of its lone pairs of electrons to the second sp2 hybrid carbon atom. In this way, we've seen that the hydrogen and the bromine have been added across the carbon-carbon double bond replacing the pi bond. Because the HBr has been added across the double bond, we call these general type of alkene reactions addition reactions. Another important feature to recognize in this alkene reaction mechanism is the presence of a positive charge on one of the carbons that did not get the initial hydrogen that was added across the double bond. This carbon atom with a positive charge is known as a carbocation. In alkene addition reactions, it will be common to have a carbocation formed in the first step of the mechanism. In later videos, we'll use the presence of the carbocation to predict which of the carbons gets the hydrogen and which of the carbons gets the nucleophile.